Cryonic suspension is not that much difficult from a, uh, different from a cemetery burial. You drain the body of fluids, you replace them with protective fluids, um, you chill the body, you uh, put it into a container, you can store that container in a vat of liquid nitrogen at about 196 degrees below zero Celsius. And here's where something changes. There is a reanimation probability. We don't know how high it is. Right now it's user dependent. Nobody's ever been reanimated. But for the people who believe that the science is moving in the right direction, that probability is not negligible. Um, the actual probability, we don't know yet, but someday, I, I'm a transhumanist, I'm a futurist, I'm a longevity, longevitist, somebody will find a way to reanimate. And when they do, the whole game changes. It's totally different. Now the cost, the cost is high. Let's call it $200,000. I'm told that uh, the Yinfang Biological Corporation in China is asking $300,000. I have to check that. But there's a number of companies coming up. There's the Cryonics Institute, which had a, well, um, had a video up here a while ago. There is uh, TransTime, which Steve mentioned. There's Tomorrow Biostasis, Biostasis being the new term for this, um, which is out of Switzerland, relatively new. There's Cryorus out of Russia. And then there is Alcor, which Max Moore, one of our panelists, uh, used to be the president of. And Alcor and Cryonics Institute, uh, with a third close third for trans time, are the US standard for cryopreservation. The prices are high, but they are coming down. Again, there is a fundamental difference in what you get for your money with cryonics and what you get for yourself with a million dollar funeral burial. I'm not gonna belabor the point, but nobody's coming back from a, from a cremation. Nobody's coming back from a cemetery burial. They might be coming back from uh, cryonics.